So welcome all, and uh, we would like us to go straight uh, to start this amazing, exciting session. Um, and uh, my name is Dr. Gidenji Gitahi. I'm the group CEO for Amra Health Africa, and uh, previously uh, worked as um, co-chair for UHC 2030, Universal Health Coverage 2030. And uh, I'm currently also uh, co-chairing the Strategy Advocacy Committee of uh, Every Woman, Every Child, or you know, the part uh, Partnership for Maternal and Child Health. So this session is extremely important to me from a point of view of universal health coverage, and also for child health, and also for SDG three and well-being for all. And uh, I am joined here by an extremely exciting panel um, uh, that uh, we are going to be um, to be working with. And uh, I'm glad to have all of you here. Please do note that um, the session is being recorded, um, and it's also available uh, in three languages. So you can go down to the interpretation icon at the bottom, which is the global map down there, and you can choose either English, Spanish, or French. Uh, so the session is actually providing interpretation. Um, I'm going to introduce my speakers as we go, so I'm not going to do that now, uh, but you will see that we have a power pack session here today. Now, um, the thing I would like to reflect on is, uh, number one, that six years ago, um, just a few months uh, now, uh, we launched the Sustainable Development Goals, and the Sustainable Development Goals were about leaving no one behind. And at the same time, within the SDGs, goal number three was very clear on global health and well-being for all. And within that goal, uh, within target 3.8, we know that uh, universal coverage was seen as a cross-cutting framework to achieve health and well-being for all. And of course, this is also integrated with the entire 17 goal framework. Now, uh, it's two years since we sat at the UN General Assembly and we signed the Universal Declaration on Universal Health Coverage, the UN Declaration on Universal Health Coverage to achieve. And all countries actually uh, did commit uh, to achieving this particular, uh, this particular uh, declaration. Now, um, a year ago, there was the launch of the Year of Action and the Nutrition for Growth. And today we are here because two great partners, that is the Global Vaccine Alliance, Gavi, and the uh, SUN, which is the Movement for uh, Nutrition, are coming together uh, to put together a partnership on how to integrate immunization and nutrition in their, not only their advocacy and policy, but also in, uh, in programmatic delivery. And we are going to be listening to uh, two country experiences on this agenda. So what I would like to do right now is without taking too much time, is introduce to us uh, Mr. Keiichi Harara. Mr. Keiichi is the Deputy Assistant Minister, Deputy Director General, for global issues at the Japan Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And Mr. Keiichi um, Hara is going to be uh, generally putting together what the general importance of uh, bringing immunization and nutrition together is. Uh, so we are really glad to have you, uh, Mr. Hara. And uh, please take your three minutes now. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kitahi, for your kind introduction. Uh, Ms. Belgu, some movement coordinator, Ms. Gupta, uh, Gavi, Deputy CEO, distinguished guests, uh, dear colleagues and friends. I wish to express my gratitude to Gavi and Sang for giving me the opportunity to join you today for this important uh, official side event of the Tokyo Nutrition for Growth Summit 2021 to launch a new approach to health services, bringing nutrition and immunization together. The government of Japan is honored to host the Tokyo N4G Summit. As a turning point within the United Nations decade of action on nutrition, World Health Assembly targets on maternal, infant, and young child nutrition and towards the Sustainable Development Goals target year of 2030. Tokyo N4G comes at a critical time. 
the global COVID-19 pandemic has caused serious disruption to life-saving nutrition and immunization health services, especially for some of the world's most vulnerable people, including women and children. In this regard, I would like to express my heartfelt welcome regarding the new Gavi Sun uh, partnership. In fact, the new Gavi Sun policy brief on this topic highlights the urgency on such a partnership. The action we are seeing launched here today, therefore, is critical and has a huge potential. An integrated approach of immunization and nutrition together would bring tremendous synergies as we Japanese ourselves experienced a great progress in our history by integrating both elements, immunization and nutrition, at maternal and child health services. By bringing these nutrition and immunization health services together, more vulnerable people can be reached, as well as the, the general population can be benefited more quickly, more cost effectively, and more efficiently. Over the last 30 years, dedicated global efforts and leadership in countries supporting routine immunization and improved nutrition have saved the lives of millions, including significantly reducing the deaths of children under five years old. We cannot let these important advances slip away. As a policy brief underscores, now is the time to invest better and smarter. I encourage all key players delivering nutrition and uh, immunization services to work together, just as Gavi and Sun are doing to advance this new dual approach, which will bring us one step closer to achieving universal health coverage. I believe today's rich discussion and the important commitments and action that will follow will bring good health to millions of more people around the world through dual nutrition and immunization programs. Finally, I look forward to welcoming you to the Tokyo N4G Summit on December 7th and 8th with your ambitious commitments to fight all forms of malnutrition. I thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Hara. And uh, I must thank you for your very clear remarks and for your government's continued support, global efforts to ensure that universal health coverage remains on the global agenda. I am aware that even when I joined UHC 2030, the biggest support was actually coming from the government of Japan. So, uh, and you continue to do so. And I think that even this movement and your uh, being here and sponsoring this uh, partnership is, um, is a show of your continued, your government's continued efforts uh, to ensure that universal coverage is indeed achieved and achieved for all. So thank you very, very much, Ms. Sahara. Um, now, we are here now to see, as uh, you know, Ms. Sahara has indicated, how do we actually have this dual approach and um, integration of uh, immunization and nutrition agenda? Because clearly, you know, uh, childhood infectious diseases, alma nutrition, are actually intertwined. They're intertwined, and they, you may as well say they're two sides of the same coin. You know, children who are malnourished are more likely uh, to get uh, to die from infectious diseases, and children who have infectious diseases are also more likely to be malnourished. So it's actually um, uh, something that, you know, the, the, the team that, you know, when we get to get Gardan and rather speaking, they are going to present to us this duality in an extremely well-researched evidence-based policy paper that we are going to be hearing about. I want to reflect on the fact that these conditions are also a big cause of a cycle of poverty, poor health, stunted growth, and exclusion, because they are also, as Anuradha will reflect, you know, she's very passionate about zero-dose children. I've talked to her numerous times about zero-dose children. And those zero-dose children who may contribute maybe 13% of uh, the children that, uh, that we have contribute more than 50% or almost 50% of actually preventable deaths. And this means that there is beyond just the absence of immunization, there is also what I may like to call structural violence around these children. And that structural violence 
is actually social norms or social issues that deny inclusion because of you know uh, issues that are beyond uh, any single uh, sector. So there are multi-sectoral structural violence issues that result in these children actually suffering um, such high uh, you know uh, challenges of infectious diseases and low immunization uh, access, and therefore there are zero dose. So I'd rather we'll speak about that a little more. Uh, but I also want to mention that uh, this dual uh, duality of infectious disease and, um, and malnutrition also reduces significantly the human capital uh, opportunity of individuals that live under these circumstances. We know very well that well-nourished children are able to have proper cognitive development and they're able to go to school and learn. And if you lack nutrition when you're young and you get stunted, then it's also likely that your school learning will, be, will not be quality, therefore you're not going to receive quality education. And also because these children, because of infectious diseases, also miss many days of school, it means that they also have you know, suboptimal education. So it is actually not only a nutrition and the infectious disease issue, it's not only a UHC issue, it's actually a socioeconomic issue because then in these countries, you end up with low human capital and therefore you don't have, you end up with a capacitated human capital for any country for his own uh, you know, socioeconomic development. So it's important for us to then reflect on these issues and therefore rolling out this partnership of immunization and nutrition program together is seen as significantly increasing the number of people reached, reducing the delivery costs and also contributing to saving millions of lives uh, through establishing that we can achieve universal health coverage for all. And uh, therefore, uh, what I would like to do now is move on to the next section where we are going to listen to a country experience. And once we listen to this, we are then going to move on to hearing a little more about, um, about the, the country experiences. So what I would like to do now is we have two countries. Um, one is Yemen, which is interested to have joint immunization, nutritional approach in policies. And we are going to be listening to Honorable Dr. Ali Ahmed Ali Walidi. He is the Acting Minister of Public Health and Population in the government of Yemen. And he'll be looking at you know, um, how Yemen is looking to integrate you know, nutrition and, um, and, and uh, immunization, uh, answering key questions around um, what does this integration bring to Yemen? Uh, what steps does Yemen look to follow to achieve this? And what is it that this partnership of uh, scaling up nutrition or SUN and the Global Vaccine Alliance, Gavi, and others, you know, uh, uh, as we've seen, the governments are critical in this. What advantage or do they bring to the approach in Yemen? So I would like to hand over to you, uh, Dr. Ali Ahmed Al Walidi, uh, to take the floor now. Thank you. Over to you. Dr. Alidi, your Al Walidi on mute. Could you please unmute so that we could hear yes. you? We really appreciate uh, support here. Okay. Thank you. Good, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Dr. Ali Al Walidi, Association Professor and uh, of Epidemiology and Public Health uh, Faculty of Medicine at Adan University, also uh, Deputy Minister for Primary Health Care Sector, uh, previous time Acting of Minister of Health. Uh, best regard from uh, Republic of Yemen. Yemen has suffered in, in the past from a major economic and social crisis, but today it is a more targeted situation as it is now suffering from the largest humanitarian crisis the world has, which is due to the wars, wars and uh, conflict that have been going on for more than seven years. The disaster has exacerbated the health situation of the population due to the collapse of the health system, the destruction of it is instruction, and uh, it is inability to provide the required health service services. The situation is getting worse day by day due to the limited uh, capabilities, equipment, cadres, and medical capabilities, which has resulted in real and clear suffering in Yemen uh, so, so, so society in all it is categories. As a result, the health and the nutritional status of Yemen society as well has declined, especially women and children as 
they are the most vulnerable groups in the uh, society. And the shield mortality rate has increased to, uh, 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 to uh, five, uh, 58.4 deaths per uh, 1,000 life births in uh, 2019 for preventable causes. Nearly half of Yemeni children suffering from chronic malnutrition and 16% from acute malnutrition. And about half of the children are unable to receive the most vaccination. Uh, our participation today in this meeting comes with our conf uh, confessions that the current conditions, which is the country going on, require concerting efforts of all and science cooperation with the partners or to uh, contribute to affiliate the burden and finding way, ways to uh, out that contribute to reduce the suffering of the population and affiliating the complex humanitarian conditions within in which the life where we accept from this partners to achieve the integration between nutrition and immunization activities to achieve higher effectiveness and contribute to reduce expenditure, uh, reducing the total burden of health workers, increasing covering of care services, and increasing access to the health services. We also accept that we also accept that this integration between nutrition and immunization will indirectly help us detect malnutrition cases in at-risk children early through joint camping provide them with the appropriate treatment and reduce the possibility of their death for of further suffering. On the other hand, we are eagerly participating today to learn from the experience and experience of the leading countries of the leading countries in this regard, with the aim of exploring appropriate methods in how to develop nutrition policies and technical guidelines and applicated this integration in some areas in our country and then expand the scope, or the scope of work in all areas in order to promote the expansion of the healthcare services integrated and access to health services, including, for example, the integrative activities of immunization program, including nutrition activities and some program of primary healthcare, such as integrative delivery activities, integ integrative supervision activities, joint assessment of health facilities, details planning of health centers and new units. And finally, integrative training for the health workers, given the technician experts in and resources of both Gafi and Sun, we look forward to further sharing the lessons learned from the experience of other countries in this regard and to obtain technical support from all partners and donors to operate the activities and monitoring their results. Our aspirations and greeted and our determination is, is high to catch up with others in providing integrative services and ensuring that our citizens have access to primary healthcare services through integration in the profession of services and in initiation of uh, practical measures for integration in the profession of services. Hoping that these aspirations will find the care and support necessary that contributed together in improving the health status of our citizens and restoring the construction of the better health system in the end I hope this success of this important event. Thank you very much, best regard from Yemen. Inshallah, I will be share this uh, uh, project or this 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 work with 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 you in with email. Inshallah, best regards again from our country. I hope from this meeting help us in this critical time which facing us in 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 our country. Best regard again. Many thanks to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali Ahmed Al Walidi. And uh, you've actually indicated that you will share your remarks on email. So please do so. And we look forward to reading them. But just reflecting on the fact that uh, you're very clear that you know we, you have some optimal um, coverage in terms of immunization um, in Yemen. 
and you also have suboptimal um, uh, nutrition. You know, in many children have, you know, you have many children who are uh, suffering malnutrition. And uh, I appreciate that uh, you look forward to this integration that has been proposed by Sun and uh, and by and, and Gabi together, uh, the partnership, and uh, it is obviously going to help you reduce the suffering of the of the of the children of of Yemen. Um, you did highlight that it's important to learn from others, others who've done it before, successes, exemplars, and also avoid the mistakes of others. I know myself when I when I was a young child, I had a yellow card, and that yellow card had uh, my immunization schedule, but also had the scoring for my weight. And therefore, you know, in a way then I could see that whenever I went to, um, to the clinic, my mother took me to the local health center, she would get my vaccination, but also the weight would be measured. And I see that, so there are many experiences to learn from, and then there are also mistakes to avoid. Um, you did mention the importance of joint assessment, integrated training of health workers. And I think that's an important point uh, that you've, you've raised, Dr. Alwalidi, that even as we achieve this integration of immunization and nutrition, it's important to also embed that in the training of health workers so that they see it from their training and therefore the practice is dependent on their training. So thank you for that point. And they're also highlighting that you look forward to, sharing, to learning experiences, sharing experiences, technical assistance uh, by Gavi and, and, and San and all the other partners. And uh, we wish Yemen all the best and we look forward to hearing a little more from you during this session. Thank you very, very much. Now, I would like to, to take this opportunity to move on to the next country experience. I am informed that uh, Dr. Samson Baba is now with us. We, South Sudan, uh, which many of you know, uh, of course, has had um, um, difficult humanitarian crisis in the past. Uh, the government is uh, holding things together. Um, and uh, we have invited Honorable Elizabeth Achuei, who is the Minister of Health, South Sudan, and a well-known expert and also a human rights activist. And today, Dr. Elizabeth Achuei is represented here by Dr. Samson Baba, Dr. Samson Baba is the Under Secretary, Minister of Health, and also Dr. Achuei's advisor on special programs. Now, South Sudan has been has many experiences on nutrition and immunization integration. I have been South Sudan. We work there uh, quite a lot under what they call the BOMA model, working with community health workers in several districts. So, what I would request, Dr. Samson Baba, if you could bring up your video, Dr. Baba, is to just share with us uh, what steps South Sudan already has taken to better integrate nutrition and immunization in health services and how this has been experienced to, you know, in a, in a manner to reach uh, universal coverage. And what are the results so far? What are the lessons learned and what recommendations would you give to other countries from this experience? So this moment is uh, for Dr. Samson Baba. Uh, over to you, Dr. Samson, for your submission. That in question one, which is rates, would you let us know how the government of South Sudan has been prioritizing the integration between immunization and nutritional services? As you know, the country suffers from torrential climatic conditions, and as a result, frequent food shortages. Point number one, in response to the food crisis, a nutrition platform was established, including community outreach. And we took this as an opportunity to integrate the immunization program and bolsa coverage. Also have noticed that mothers and caregivers are much more willing to travel long distances to access ready to use therapeutic food being provided to malnourished children and the outpatient Centers. The third one is there are 854 nutrition outposts for outpatient therapeutic programs or OPD sites, reaching over 200,000 malnourished under five children in 2020. The Ministry of Health and David Taylor integration of immunization into the large scale RUTF program. 
targeting 686 OTP centers located in 54 priority counties. Our aim was to target 200,000 malnourished under five children who will be screened and benefit from nutrition vacation. Therefore, Immunization screening system was adopted in the nutrition service unit and the outpatient department of primary health care centers where children between the age of zero and 23 months were first screened for zero dose or under immunization. We adopted our weekly orientation meetings, training materials, job aids, coordinated micro planning at facility level, job mentoring, integrated supportive supervision, joint review meetings, reporting, coordinated or aligned demand materials and follow-ups and have used the integration approach. Combination of policy guidelines such as reaching every district or community it further facilitated the integration of the service. As there are two implementing partners managing the nutrition service program and the curative and preventive health services, the program managers of these two programs were oriented to share ownership of their programs and ease the process of integration organization services to their respective programs. They also harmonize intention program elements to an extent possible. Other practices adopted by this staff included retention practice during the period of intervention, trust between staff, staff to staff support, <coughs> and user centered culture shared. Belief. ownership between the two program staff, joint decision making between the two programs staff, <clears throat> and regular communication and meetings. In question number two, <clears throat> which reads, we know that the integration in South Sudan is already generating good results. We share the main outcomes so far. And they are consequent to the implementation of integration of EPI and nutrition. There was improvement in coverage in 2020 as compared to 2019. Remarkable improvement was reported in counties that embraced integration wholeheartedly. <coughs> Examples include Mumbai East, Mumbai Center. A wheel center and Rukona center. Overall, there was a reduction in immunization dropout rates after integration in both nutritional programs and pediatric out outpatient departments of primary health care center. Evidence of positive impact should encourage stakeholders of expanded program on immunization, focus on sustainability scale up conventions and other counties in South Sudan and logistics also. This requires sustained policy implementation practice and tend to optimize and the scale of integration of PI and other services in Brahma health care centers to improve childhood immunization coverage, equity while reducing morbidity mortality from between preventable infectious diseases about the five. That is the answers that we have given you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Samson Baba. Uh, very clear. And uh, again, I hope that uh, the organizers of this event will receive your written remarks for sharing because there's a lot I can pick from there in terms of what South Sudan has learned. And uh, it's very, very practical. 
issues around having, you know, immunization and nutrition at different departments at the Ministry of, Edu of, of Health. Uh, and that's the way it has been for a very long time. The question is, how do you harmonize planning, policy coherence? How do you harmonize programmatic integration between two di different departments in the Ministry of Health? You're talking about joint planning. You're talking about joint policy implementation. You're talking about bringing these two together, staff to staff training, mentorship. And all these are critically important in ensuring this integration and uh, joint review meetings. And I think for, for the countries that are here with us, uh, it is very clear that there is a starting point, that this integration, which is being advocated for by San and Gavi, has a starting point. It's not overwhelming. Uh, and uh, we'll hear a little more. And uh, thank you so much uh, for, 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 that, for that sharing, uh, Dr. Samson Baba. And uh, what I would like to do now is move on to the next section. Um, and the next section is really to introduce um, the San Gavi partnership. As has been noticed in this conversation, it is critical. It's not a choice. Uh, it is actually imperative that because the children who are zero dose or the children who need immunization are the same children who need nutrition services. And for long in the health sector, we've talked about integration of services, vertical, verticalization and the horizontalization of health services. And uh, we have seen this not only at this level, but even at the UHC uh, level, I have seen more and more integration of movements of nutrition, movements of immunization, movements of maternal health, child health, HIV, TB, non-communicable diseases, and they all in, a, in an aim to achieve universal health coverage. So this partnership recognizes the need for this and the value that we gain by integrating services because you know, communities don't wake up and say, I have an immunization problem. They don't wake up and say, I have a nutrition problem. They don't wake up and say, I have water and sanitation problem. They actually, these problems are integrated in the household by the community. The community experiences them together. And it's up to us internationally, regionally, nationally, and locally to look at these patterns and then approach, as has been said by Dr. Samson Baba, to have a user-centered design. And this partnership is actually a user-centered design. So I am going to be inviting uh, my friends and colleagues here, uh, Garuda Barberg and Andrew Adha Gupta to announce the launch of the new San Gavi Joint Policy Brief, which is very well done, very well written. I must congratulate you. I read through it and I was really impressed and also uh, to announce this, this partnership. So to begin with, I would like to invite uh, Garuda Barberg, my long-term friend, United Nations Assistant Secretary General, and also the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement Coordinator. Uh, your time starts now, Garda. Welcome, and really good to see you again after such a long time. Over to you, Garda. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It is so good to be here, and uh, Mr. Gidai, it's so good to have you as a moderator, because I would like to appoint you as an ambassador for this, uh, and a champion, which you are by nature, I think. But um, let me first thank um, the colleagues and the partners of Gavi and the government of Japan for co-hosting uh, this important uh, event. Uh, um, uh, Madam Gupta and Mr. Uh, Hara, thank you very much for joining us uh, here, but also the country rep representatives. And I would like to um, uh, say thank you to all those people who have been working so hard to get the, um, the, the notes together, to get the, the paper together, but also to get this program uh, together. Um, it's, there's a lot behind the scenes and a lot of challenges that need to be uh, addressed before we are here. But now we are here and thank you all because this is a critical moment. This is the start of a partnership, um, but and it's born in the COVID-19 lockdown and um, uh, crisis that are connected to it. But it should become the new normal because as some of us have, have already uh, noted, we are lagging behind when it comes to nutrition. We are lagging behind when it comes to vaccination. We are lagging behind when it comes to health and uh, human uh, development, uh, education, and mention it. 
So from our perspective, this should become our basic attitude and behavior. Where can we work together to support communities, to support families, to support regions to create their own future? And I think vaccination and uh, nutrition are um, an excellent partner to start with, as you have already emphasized, Mr. Moderator, they um, are, are going hand in hand. Better prevention through vaccination and nutrition means better learning, and better learning is better earning, and better earning means that you are able to escape poverty, and if you are able to escape poverty, you can create, create prosperity, not only for your family, not only for your um, community, but for your country. And then peace and stability are also around the corner. So what I want to say here is that there is a lot of reason for joining forces, not only in crisis, but from now on. And it will impact not only um, the number of vaccinated uh, 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 people, and it will not only impact uh, the nutrition uh, status and support, starting with children, but uh, of course, focusing on the whole families. It if, if this will be a success and it will be rolled out as it is already in Yemen and South Sudan, but there are other uh, countries waiting for it. For instance, I visited recently Malawi, and the Minister of Health said, yes, um, please come with this initiative because I will embrace it. We are delivering a vaccination campaign, but we noticed that in the remote area, um, some families are uh, hesitating whether they should go to the hospital uh, because they don't know where the, um, uh, uh, the COVID uh, virus will be and whether the vaccine is safe. But if we are able to uh, make a smart package of uh, nutrition and other services, maybe together with vaccination, it will be, it will be much more attractive. And she said, because, um, and that is what I like, it's also very, um, it's also a very good thing when it comes to labor intensivity and it is cost effective. So let us uh, use all, all these arguments to make it happen, not only in the crisis, but it should become the new normal and it should become uh, our new behavior to combine what we can uh, combine to serve people towards their own dignity and future. Then I told you already, um, please read the note, because very often people ask, um, what can I do? How am I involved? And who needs to do this? Uh, and what are the challenges? Part of the note is um, uh, the recommendations, the conclusions and the recommendations. And there are um, actions for governments rec uh, recommended clear actions to make sure it's not only part of policy, but it becomes part of legislation, uh, costing, uh, investment, etc., as a natural part of the, of the universal health coverage uh, and maybe other services. There is a recommendation and action agenda for uh, uh, international health community to advocate for this, to make it happen and to also measure the uh, impact, because this is the official start. Now we have a baseline, but we should measure progress um, as is rightfully also part of the, uh, of the, of the Nutrition for Growth Summit. Accountability um, should be our middle name. Then there are actions for civil society. There are actions for academia. Uh, there are actions also for the private sector and businesses they need to uh, showcase that they want to be part of the solution by supporting this, um, this way of smart thinking about to deliver the, uh, the, the, the joint approach, but also by um, starting to real obey and respect the uh, BMS code, the breast milk substitute uh, um, uh, that is a code uh, of marketing that is developed by WHO. I would like to say to these companies, if you really want to become part of the solution, if you really want to be a player in the future, make this, this future uh, better for each and everyone, 
get this elephant out of the room and become part of the solution in supporting breastfeeding and really supporting joint approaches um, uh, like this. But there are two more um, uh, players that I would like to, to, to mention here. One is the donors. And I would like to uh, invite donors, investors, and foundations that when you invest, you look at, you also recognize smart combinations of uh, things because uh, we can only reach and implement the sustainable development goals and overcome the impact of COVID-19 if we are working in collaboration. But this collaboration should be uh, identified and also recognized uh, and um, in incentivized, I would say. So please put it in your uh, system. And then finally, I would like to mention parliaments. Parliaments in countries need to encourage, control, and support the government to make it happen. Having said uh, this, I would like to ask the almost uh, 100 uh, participants here, we count on you, whereas you can count on uh, Gavi and uh, the Sun Movement, wherever we are, at country level, um, at subnational uh, level, to make this happen. But we also count on you. Please lead from where you are. And if you haven't identified what your contribution could be, um, which I don't believe because um, you are committed here, but please lead from where you are. There is a question in the question uh, box in the Q and A's. Are there challenges? Yes, of course there are challenges, but we are facing challenges, challenges every day. Um, and the, the COVID crisis and lockdowns and uh, disconnections um, are, are adding to this. But do we lean back if we face a challenge? No. Um, we focus on creating, make turning challenges into opportunities, and then you open really a panorama of new opportunities. So I would like to invite, um, look at potential, look at challenges that you are facing as an opportunity, find an entry point and uh, make it part of the solutions and then be proud of it. Finally, I'm extremely proud, but this is only the beginning. This launch is the beginning of what, uh, from our perspective, hopefully will be an extreme combination, um, vaccination and nutrition, and maybe um, other partners and initiatives will join. Thank you so much. Back to you, Dr. Kitai. And you are already announced as a champion for this uh, uh, partnership. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gerda, and I, and I accept the you know the the proposal because I I truly believe that when we talk about nutrition for growth, we are not just talking about nutrition for growth of children. We are talking nutrition for growth of communities, of households, of countries, and of the world, and ensuring that the world is on a good footing uh, for its uh, equitable, distributable wealth and uh, uh, leaving no one behind. So. Thank you very much for your very passionate remarks. And uh, of course, I must reiterate uh, reiter that I'm really impressed with the inclusion of parliamentarians in this agenda, because at the end of the day, every government that we are talking to reports to the people and the people's representatives are parliamentarians. And therefore there is a mechanism to hold governments accountable to achieving the commitments that we are asking governments to hold here. And of course, civil society and your call to private sector, especially uh, those that are promoting uh, breast milk um, um, uh, substitutes to actually ensure that they become part of the solution, not to continue being on the side, on the other side of the solution. I don't think we are, uh, you know, we, we, we are two teams. We have, we are actually one team playing one goal and that one goal is uh, good health and well-being for all. So everyone should be on the same side to be part of the solution. Thank you, Gerda. And now I would like to move on to uh, Anuradha Gupta. And uh, Anuradha, again, a longtime friend of mine, is the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Global Vaccine Alliance. Um, and uh, she's going to be talking to us uh, about the policy brief and also um, you know, an official high-level statement of Gavi and Sun. And uh, I see that uh, there is a question for you already, Anuratha. Um, and the question is about whether Gavi is planning to support this 
uh, integration into other countries. So you could comment on that. And I see uh, there is also a comment um, for uh, Gerda uh, that the offer is well defined to proceed further to have better nutrition and good health. And that's from uh, Aslam Shaheen from Pakistan. So you are very, very clear uh, and articulate on that. And uh, we appreciate that. Uh, for our participants, please feel free to use the Q&A, put your questions, and I will request our panelists to continuously scan the Q&A and answer as many questions as possible. If time allows, we are going to have a 10 minute Q&A and you will, if you want to ask a question to any of the panelists, you can raise your hand and I will spot you and then we can ask you to ask, a, to ask your question live, but feel free to use the Q&A as well to make comments, not only questions, contributions, experiences, and uh, please um, continue to do so. So I would now like to give uh, the next opportunity to uh, Anuradha Gupta, Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. Over to you, Anuradha. So thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Gitinji, and good morning, good afternoon, good, e uh, good evening, everybody, depending on which part of the world you are joining us from. And as has already been uh, said, this partnership is about fighting the twin challenge of malnutrition and infectious diseases, which together cause millions of preventable child deaths. And please note the word preventable. These are deaths that need not happen. These are deaths that we can easily prevent. And together they cause misery every year, increasingly in the most marginalized and vulnerable communities. It is tragic that even before the pandemic hit, more than 13 million children born every year remain deprived of even a single vaccine shot. And Gitinji did uh, mention my passion for, for these children. These are our zero dose children, and they represent the most alarming and deep rooted societal inequities. They're often deprived of not just immunization, not nutrition, but other essential health and non-health services and unable to access healthy diets, essential nutrition, putting them at much, much higher risk of death, disease and disability. In 2020, the number of zero dose children increased by 30% to over 17 million due to pandemic associated disruptions. Over three quarters of under immunized children are now zero dose and 50% of vaccine preventable deaths occur among these, these children, zero dose children. So there is no time to lose here. These children and communities are those being left furthest behind and pushed even further to the margins by the pandemic like the Likewise, the COVID-19 pandemic is also expected to lead to an additional 2.6 million stunted and 9.3 million wasted children by 2020. And despite its devastating consequences, the COVID-19, as Greta mentioned, uh, is also an opportunity to do things differently. In fact, it is critical that we don't waste this crisis, but actually convert this into an opportunity to build more integrated and resilient health systems. And, and to the question that was posed to me, yes, absolutely. From Gavi's side, we stand very committed to making sure that we encourage and support countries to the hilt to, to, to integrate essential services and interventions like immunization and nutrition, but much more. You know, there's so much more that can be brought together. And in my opinion, every single uh, contact that we establish with communities must absolutely be maximized. And the offering that we make to communities must be made richer and richer and richer by way of, uh, you know, more and more and more services. Therefore, I'm personally extremely proud to be launching this joint Gavi Sun policy brief today that demonstrates that immunization and nutrition interventions not only complement each other, but that integrating them could help us reach many more children and protect them from, as I said, mortality, morbidity, medical impoverishment, and, and, and disability. Good nutrition 
we know is the bedrock for a functioning immune system as it protects against illnesses and infections and supports recovery. And undernutrition worsens the impact and duration of diseases. For example, compared to those who are well-nourished, acutely malnourished children are between 2.5 and 15 times more likely to die from pneumonia and are up to eight times more likely to die of diarrhea. Conversely, immunization protects children from vaccine preventable diseases, diseases which worsen their nutritional status and their ability to respond to nutritional interventions, contributing to still lower rates of child malnutrition. In Ethiopia, for instance, a study has found that every percentage point increase in measles vaccination coverage was associated with a 0.65% decrease in the rate of acute malnutrition in under five children. Immunization reaches, as you know, over 90% of the world's children and more households than any other routine health intervention, bringing the majority of families into contact with the health system five or more times during the first year of a child's life. Immunization, therefore, I feel provides a platform to reach these children with essential health services, including nutrition interventions. Bundling together these health services can unlock significant cost benefits, allowing lower income countries to accomplish much more with their limited resources and further reach missed communities. In countries such as Madagascar and Zimbabwe, and we heard from South Sudan and, and uh, Yemen already, growth monitoring, supplementary feeding, health education, vitamin supplementation, and immunization are all provided together, resulting in improved nutritional status and health gains for children involved. And that is something that we want to do more and more and more in countries that we work with. But real integration between immunization and nutrition means going further by ensuring policy coherence, as has already been said, across delivery platforms and stakeholders. And there were several wonderful points that were raised by, by our country representatives, you know, highlighting the importance of capacity building, joint assessments, et cetera. And I think we need to seriously think about that. But really the essence here is that this is the time to invest better and smarter. Firstly, we must mobilize political will at the highest levels to ensure prioritization of routine immunization and nutrition with a focus on equity and those who are left furthest behind. Secondly, we must enhance our ability to identify vulnerable and marginalized communities and zero dose children by using triangulation of available data desegregated by sex, social, cultural, and economic factors. Thirdly, governments need to ensure immunization and nutrition interventions are fully integrated in the basic package of health services by sustaining and scaling up domestic funding to strengthen PSC systems. Fourthly, we must foster new and diverse multi-stakeholder partnerships, including with community-based organizations across program design, decision-making, and implementation. And lastly, the international health community must support governments on integrating immunization and nutrition programs by scaling up funding for equity enhancing strategies on immunization and nutritional services. With the launch of this policy brief, we call on countries, our partners, donors, stakeholders to join us in mobilizing around equity by working together to build more responsive and integrated health systems with a focus on identifying and reaching zero dose children and the missed communities that they represent with essential health services. I really thank you all. Let's just make it happen and let's just make a difference. Over to you, Dr. Gitinji. Thank you again. Thank you, Anuratha, for your very passionate submission of this partnership and its uh, importance and the launch of the policy brief. I've seen questions around uh, the evidence around supporting integration. So please look at the policy brief. There is adequate uh, evidence uh, you know, supporting this integration. But uh, because we have run out of time, we'll skip the question time, uh, which was allocated. And uh, please continue to answer your questions on Q&A. And my panelists are going to actually help to answer that. What I would like to do now is actually to go straight to requests. Uh, my other friend, Dr. Naoko Yamamoto, who we worked with very closely to establish the Universal Health Coverage uh, Movement. And Dr. Naoko Yamamoto is the Assistant Director General, Universal Health Coverage, healthier populations at the World Health Organization and also the United Nations Nutrition Chair. Dr. Naoko, the floor is yours now. 
And there is a question specifically to you, so you can cover this in your uh, final three minute remarks. What can governments in Europe, but I would like to add also in developing countries do to support adherence to the WHO code of marketing for the breast milk um, uh, supplement uh, companies uh, and also appropriate uh, marketing or avoiding inappropriate marketing of foods to infants and young children. Over to you Naoko, the moment is now yours for your three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear friend, Gigi. We call Gigi, but Gitaki. And also, thank you, I see the Herda and Gupta, my dear friends and distinguished participants. First of all, I congratulate and thank you, Gabi and Vaccine Alliance and the Scare Up Some Movement to organize this event, also launching this very exciting initiative. Uh, of course, uh, WHO is one of the Some Movement team, but uh, Herda, I respect your leadership as well. So uh, this is a really, really win-win partnership with San Gabi. And also this is, as Helda said, this is a quite win-win smart investment for the society. Vaccination, nutrition is core. So really, really appreciate. And because WHO has a one uh, pulse shot survey, we say pulse survey about impact of the COVID-19, which showed that the substantial disrupt disruption or primary health care, including immunization, delivery, essential nutrition action, as well as nutrition counseling, like a support new mother to commence exclusive breastfeeding. This is very clear. So how we can build back better, uh, fairer, and healthier. That's the issues. And Gigi, Gigi, no, Gigi, you mentioned about the breastfeeding uh, 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 breast uh, feeding and code of breastfeeding issues, or substitute issues. Yes, this is a WHO push together with all partners to, to work with breast, uh, promote breastfeeding and support the community and the country to do that direction. But as still, our effort is not enough and there are several uh, private uh, sector company a promote another promote another direction. So having said that, this immunization and uh, uh, nutrition joint uh, services also could be the entering point for the support mother to continue to breastfeeding because immunization and breastfeeding are very close, right? It's a very uh, uh, affect each other. But not only the um, WHO would like to continue to be patient, continue to dialogue with the private sector. Ask them to think about it, to contribute to health. But not only that one, it, uh, ask country, each country to provide or introduce the uh, evidence-based policy, like a taxation, laboring, or communication, advertising. There are a lot of ways to go, but uh, still, we need more partners, as did you say that you said that, you say that right, we need more uh, partners and, and uh, including the uh, civil society organization, academia, government, as well as the private sector as well. So this is a big issue, but uh, this integrated approach, nutrition, immunization, and also Gupta called more another service should be integrated in the primary health care at a community level with supported by community. That is uh, crucial. And I'm very happy to see that many, many other kind of uh, activity or new initiative is coming. For example, like a, provide a ele basic electricity at clinic or schools or provide wash services at clinic and schools and community together with nutrition or together with food safety, as well as immunization and health education and maternal child health care services or neonatal care services, that kind of uh, innovative idea and partnership and trust each other is that's very crucial. So I really encourage today's activities and also launching the event. So Nutrition for Growth Summit, thank you my home country, Japan, the hosting Nutrition Growth Summit. And this is a place we commit and also provide, uh, find the new partners to work together and 
implement at the country level. And this is a big opportunity for uh, the, uh, for us. Uh, as Helda said, that yes, we have a big challenges not before COVID and not COVID after COVID, but we believe that we can come up the more uh, cut the uh, break the cycle of poor health, stunted growth, malnutrition, as well as preventable disease and mortality and ultimately poverty and exclusion. We, let's break the cycle. We need more healthier, fairer, and greener society. Health equity is a core, and this initiative is really, really touch and uh, to improve health equity issues. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Naoko. Thank you so, so much. Always very passionate about equity um and um also reflecting on the support of japan government for nutrition for growth we'll all be looking forward to that session and um uh, you know the point that was made by anura that, that immunization in my summary presents the a platform opportunity for integration of maternal and child health services it is actually the contacts that are made and also what house and said integrating immunization and nutrition gives us an extra incentive for mothers to follow up on the immunization schedule. So I think this is a really critical moment. I know we've run out of time. I'm sorry we couldn't take all your questions. There were many. I must thank you all. Tewedros, Alemehu, you talked about the study in Ethiopia as further evidence uh, that was carried out by JSI. Further evidence that actually integration of immunization and nutrition, so increase immunization uptake and also increase uh, uh, nutrition among the children. Thank you all. We now bring the session to a close. Uh, there is a request to post the policy brief online. There is a request that many civil society organizations and others want to promote it. Thank you all. Be, uh, you know, be safe and get vaccinated if you're not. Thank you and bye bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Dr. Kitai. Thank you all for organizing. Thank you. The Thank start. You. Thank you very much. All of you to make this happen. Thank you.